okay so today we are going to do lab number nine it is a uh, building a decade counter using Arduino Uno and a seven segment display so this objective the objective of this experiment is to interface a seven segment display with Arduino Uno so before we start the lab we will do a very brief discussion about seven segment display so I will use a PowerPoint slide to go with the topic of seven segment display So I think it is a very common display that is used in many electronic devices to display information. Seven segment displays. This presentation will demonstrate how a seven segment display can be used to display decimal numbers 0 to 9 and some alpha characters a common anode seven segment display works how a common cathode seven segment display works and how to select the register value for a seven segment display and if you look at the picture at the bottom lots of use of seven segment display a seven segment display it's sometimes in short we call SSD is simply a figure eight groups of LEDs some include a decimal point each segment is labeled A through G look at the for here A B C D E F G and some seven segment display has a decimal point DP Seven segment displays are available in two configurations. One is a common cathode. The common cathode method, look at the common cathode method, the picture over here. Okay. All lead cathodes are connected together in common cathode method. And in the common anode method, all LED anodes are connected. So this is the common anode co configuration and this is the common cathode configuration. So these are the things uh, uh, we can display. Decimal digits 0 to 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And this alpha characters can display. The important point to note about here some segments are active or on and some segments are off okay red color they are on and uh, white color they are off and it makes a different digits or alpha characters so we have a sample message that is displaying over here called shoda okay so by this way you can display some messages by the seven second display. So let's see what is the basic LED operation. To understand how a seven segment display works, we must review how an LED works. To turn on, to turn and LED on, look at over here. This is the anode. Positive side is the anode, negative side is the cathode. The anode must be at a higher voltage potential, close to 1.5 volt than the cathode. Okay. Why 1.5 volt? Because that's the voltage drop over here. Okay. If you apply some voltage on the cathode, a voltage drop appears over here. Okay. So anode must be a higher voltage potential close to 1.5 volt than the cathode the amount of current flowing through the lead will determine the brightness of the lead how much current is flowing that will determine how much bright the lead is 
the amount of current is controlled by a series resistor that's not shown over here Only, okay so current flow determine that how much that the lead is and we control it by a series resistor this is a common anode configuration anode at 5 volt look at over here this is the positive side anode that is it 5 volt so top circuit at switch at 5 volt okay lead is off you see this is 5 volt the switch top switch at 5 volt so in that case the 5 volt and 5 volt certainly it will make it will turn off the switch look at over here the anode must be at a higher voltage potential than the cathode so condition does not satisfy the lead will be off now if we place the switch at bottom side look at over here switch at zero volt switch at zero volt in that case certainly satisfy the condition to turn on the lead anode this is at higher potential it is 5 volt and it is 0 volt at the cathode so bottom circuit the lead is on anode at 5 volt cathode at 0 volt the 220 ohm resistor controls the current we have used a resistor of 220 ohm that controls the current to the lead a larger resistor less current lead will be less bright a smaller resistor more current a better lead So look at over here. This is a common and a configuration. Five volt make it off, zero volt make it make it on. Now we have a simple example over here. Common cannot seven seven display. Now look at the connection. And the question is, what value would be displayed in the common anode seven seven displacement? Look at over here. This is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And in common anode configuration, when the cathode at 0 volt and anode at 5 volt, then that lead will be on. So when this is grounded, look at over here. This segment G is grounded. So it is on. Segment G is on. Which are grounded? Segment F is on because it is grounded and segment uh, this particular segment segment e e is not segment e is off segment uh, d is off segment c is off segment uh, i think no segment c and b they are on segment a is off segment a at five volt so it is off segment b c both are grounded that's what side so that is on so B, C and F, G, they are on and other, they are off. So that's the scenario. Let's see what happens in this configuration. Look at over here. B, C, F, G, common anode, 0 volt segment is on. So those segments are on and uh, 5 volt segment A, D and E, they are off. So segment B, C, F, G, they are on other segments are off so it makes four okay any question have you understood the operation yes sir okay so this is the common cathode configuration let confirm for the common cathode Cathode at the ground, look at over here, just opposite things of the common anode. The top circuit switch at 5 volt. The switch at 5 volt, you see. So, anode side at 5 volt, cathode is grounded. Common cathode, that means cathode, cathode will be grounded. So, anode at higher potential, the lead is on. Anode at 5 volt, cathode at 0 volt. The 220 ohm resistor controls the current. A larger resistor, less current and demand lead. A smaller resistor, more current and better lead. Now, if you do the switch on the bottom picture, 
switch at zero volt, the LED become off. Okay, because it does not satisfy the condition to turn on the LED. So let's see the picture of common cathode. Just opposite of the operation of common anode over here, five volt makes the common cathode on, and zero volt make, makes off. Okay. So let's see the example. So what value would be displayed in the common cathode seven segment dispersion? Now do you tell me. So I am giving you the floor. Look at the picture and tell me what value will be displayed. Look at this over here. Five pole make it on in this case. Now in the look at over here. Five pole, yes, five pole make it on and zero pole make, make it off in the common cathode. So which are five pole? A, B, they are five pole. C is not five pole, okay? A, B, D, E, and G. Okay, they are five pole. That means they are on. Otherwise, on or off. So let's see. A, B, D, E, and G. You see, that's on segment. A, B, D, E, and G. And all other off. C and F are off. Okay, they are grounded. You see, this two are grounded. Let's see. C is grounded. C is grounded. And if you look at over here, F is grounded. Okay. So C and F are grounded, so they are off. And A, B, D, E, and G, they are at 5 volt. Okay. So they are on. So it makes a 2. So this is the way you display different character. You turn on and off a particular LED of 7 segment and a particular message or character can be or number can be displayed. So now we will consider the register value for the 7 segment display. The register value determines the amount of current that is flowing through the LED in the 7 segment display. This is why they are sometimes called current limiting resistors. The amount of current determines how luminous or bright the LED will be. If the resistor is too large, current will be too small and the LED will not be visible. If the resistor is too small, the current will be too large and the LED will be damaged. So you must pick up the right value, okay, so that you don't damage the LED or at the same time, right brightness or luminous should be achieved. So how do you select the current value? You must read the data sheet for the 7 segment display that you are using. Look at over here. The diagram below is a single segment of a common anode 7 segment display. The voltage across the LED when it's on is 1.5 volt. Okay. So using Kirchhoff's voltage law, we know that the voltage across the resistor is 3.5 volt. Look at over here. 5 volt minus the voltage drop across the LED, that's 1.5 volt. So what voltage you get in a Kirchhoff's kind of Voltage, uh, uh, I think voltage now. Five minus this voltage drop. What remains? Three point five volt. So voltage across the resistor is three point five. So that's using the Ohm's law. You can calculate the value of the resistor if you know the current that is to flow through the LED. So resistors that we need to pick up can be found by dividing that uh, three point five volt divided by the how much current is flowing. So while we can get the value of the current, look at over here. This is the LTS 4801JR. This is the number or identification number of the common anode 7 segment display. Okay. And this is the plot of luminous intensity versus forward current. Okay. That comes from the data sheet of this LTS 4801JR, common anode 7 segment display. So in your case, uh, what is the uh, seven segment display that you are using? So depending on the display, I, from the data sheet, data sheet, you will get the graph. Okay. So let's arbitrarily pick a luminous 
intensity of 1.5 1.5 that's not too bad not too dim from the graph we need a kind 115 milliampere look at it for here if you uh, look at the graph for that luminous we need 15 milliampere so using homes now r equal to 3.5 volt that is voltage across the resistor divided by the current 15 milliampere and if you calculate it becomes 233.33 ohm so you need to take closest standard value probably you not get exactly 233.33 ohm in the market and this is common value that you can get in the market 220 ohm closest standard value you need to pick up okay so that's a way to calculate the amount of uh, what is the register value to get the right brightness for your seven segment display so we are doing an example calculate the register value required to have a luminous intensity of 2.5 so we need to get a luminous intensity of 2.5 so we need to plot find out what is the corresponding current for it 25 if you look at the graph at uh, 2.5 intensity uh, brightness, uh, the current, this is the amount of current we get from the graph 25 milliampere forward current. So, from the graph, we need a kind of 25 milliampere. So, in the ohms now, the rest of it is 140 ohm and the closest 150. So, you need to uh, just pick up the closest standard value that is available in the market. So, that's uh, the theory behind your 7 segment display. Now, let me, I think, uh, is the size of your lab sheet uh, font size so now by this time we have very good idea about the seven segment display how it works now we'll design our system now uh, as the main brain of our system we are going to use the arduino Uno microcontroller board that we have used several in our several of our labs we have uh, finished earlier and already are familiar with this uh, microcontroller board and uh, also you will find again a brief discussion about the board over here so i think i am i can uh, safely forward because already you are familiar with these things again a brief discussion on your left sheet of the seven segment display okay and finally you have how to write the code okay the code has been given it is a pretty long code look at over here uh, for display zero, which segment you want to make high or low is defined over here. So we write a routine by switch statement. So I will use a loop, okay, to display different number. So to display zero, I think you to make the I think which segment you to make a uh, of this is I think median segment middle segment will go off to display zero this g segment will go off and all other will go off so let's look at the code so only one segment segment g is off put over here and otherwise all other segments are on so similar way to display one again which segment will go on b and c will be on all other will go off so to display one, B and C is on all other off. So this is the way you can dif display any number or character on seven segment display. Now today, since by this time you have a very good idea how to work with the seven segment display and how to write the code using Arduino Uno, the code is given in your lab sheet. Now those who are using the Tinkercad to do your lab. You can directly use the code that has been given in your lab sheet. But as I have mentioned that if you use Proteus flowchart method, life becomes much simpler. That's why designing a complex display system or algorithm by 7-7 display is a very simple job 
a few lines of code in Proteus. So I'll display how to, or I'll show you how to use Proteus to design the system with uh, very little, um, very, very less effort. That means it will be a very quick job in Proteus and define we can easily manipulate. Okay, so let's uh, use Proteus. Let me give you a demonstration how we can use Proteus to design this system in a very simple way. So let me run Proteus. So Proteus is starting. This is the splash screen of Proteus. Uh, this is the fast or main interface of the Proteus. So from here, we'll pick up new flowchart. So it is initializing the project wizard. So let's give a name for our project. Let's say MAS Lab 9 7 segment display. Okay. So again, uh, Arduino family, we are using Arduino number board over here. If you use define microcontroller, you can pick up from here. And this is the compiler or visual designer for Arduino and here. So let's click next. Now if you click the finish button, then it will open up the design window and the flowchart window. So this is a design window with the Arduino window and this is the visual designer. So in the visual designer again, uh, let's just increase it a little bit and arrange this setup part, left side, this is the loop part and uh, let's bring it a little bit on top so that you can see. So this is the coding that is a uh, visual coding or uh, graphical coding over here and this is the Arduino node. So we need to add seven segment display. So let's go to the visual designer, right click the peripheral, add peripheral. So there are lots of peripheral over here. Let's find out how is the seven segment display. Breakout peripheral. Uh, no, it is not over here. Uh, let's uh, group peripheral. Yes, I think in group peripheral we have found a seven segment display. Okay, look at over here. Group four, digit display module. I think it is a group of four digits you can display. Okay, look at over here. One, two, three, four. So it comes in a module. This I think widely used nowadays. I think uh, there are four digit or four character or four symbol you can display together by using a single device. Okay, so we'll pick up this one. So if you look at the design window, this is our four seven segment display we have used. And the best thing, only one pin you need to connect. Okay, look at over here. Not friends, okay. GC1, okay. Connection. D2, okay. So I think uh, they have done the connection automatically for you. Okay. And now. Uh, only you don't need to do, do any change over here just go to the coding 
Okay, so this, uh, we are going to display different number 0 to 9. Okay, 0 to 9. So let's use a, I think, a variable assignment. Define a variable integer. Let's say define a variable i and initialize with the variable with a zero value. And for the display part, I think I will to initialize the display. So we will do the initialization just only one time and also we will set the brightness over here directly uh, from here only one time because uh, throughout our uh, i think uh, operation we will keep the brightness same if you want to change the brightness at for different digit then you need to uh, in the loop you need to include this uh, block okay so this is the bad, I think uh, there's connection was not proper over here. Let me just fix the connection. Okay. So badness, uh, there are three different badness has been given. Bright, dark, darkest, bright, typical, and brightest. So let's go for the bad typical. So we have uh, initialized our seven seven display. We have set the brightness. Next, just display. Okay. So to display, I think uh, what you need to do, I want to run through a loop. Okay. In the loop, we need to test whether we have displayed all the numbers or not. So let's pick up a decision block. We'll display zero to nine. So in the decision block, we we'll check that condition i less than 10. That means i start from 0, i start from 0, so 0 to 9 it will continue. So 0 to 9 will be displayed. Then again 0 to 9. This decade counter, so 0 to 9. So I start from 0 and less than 10 minutes, it will come up to 9. So if the condition is true, then we display that digit. So let's use the display block. And what position? Because there are four 7 segment display over here. First, this gives the position, the position 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay? Like if you look at the designer, if you look at over here, first location is position 0, then position 1, 2, 3. Okay. So at, at what position you want to display? Let's say first location we want to display position 0. And what will you want to display? The value of i. Okay. So after displaying the value 0, you want to display. 1. So how to do it? Increment the value i by 1. So again use an assignment block and you do the increment i equal to i plus 1. Okay. So increment i by 1 to go to the next digit. So next time it will display 1, again next time it will display 2, it will continue till 9, when 9 will happen, what will happen, the condition will get false next time, that means when uh, i will be 10, the condition will get false. So when the condition will get false, we need to, okay, we need to reset the value. So how to reset the value, again? Use an assembly block. You, when the condition becomes becomes power, you reset the value of i to zero, so that 
you start from the very beginning 0 to 9 again 0 to 9 so when the condition is false So when the condition is false, again you receive the value of i to 0, again it will display from 0 to 9. And uh, we need to give a small delay, otherwise it will be very fast to visualize what is happening. So how much delay want to give? Want to give? Let's say. Uh, one second delay. Want to visualize very clearly, okay? One second delay after every digit display. Okay, I think let me save the project, file, save project. Now let's simulate it. Okay, let's simulate. Now let's click the simulation button or play button at the bottom. So it will compile your project. Still it is compiling. Yes, I think compile completion process is completed. And now it is simulating. Look at what here. Over here, zero, one, two. We have given one second delay. Three, After 9, again it will start from 0. So, it will continue again and again until you power it off. Okay? To make it faster, you can uh, reduce the delay. Okay, if you reduce the delay over here, it will be faster. Just reduce the delay over here, then the uh, counting will be a little bit faster. Or uh, if you want to delay, increase the de time over here. So this is the way I think uh, you can use Proteus to design a system, and you can easily display different character, different symbol. Because if your project is a bigger project and lots of information you want to display i think um, it will be a tedious job okay in conventional programming because uh, different way different character you want to display in proteus i think uh, it gives an easy method or easy way to fine tune or quickly display the information without any hard work so if you use proteus then i think uh, this is the way you can do and if you use tinkercad then uh, the, uh, the way that is given in a lab sheet you can continue. So now you start your lab and if you support us go with the some, uh, method that I have shown to you and those who want to use the Tinkercad then you use the code that is provided in your lab sheet.